Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Kreis, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get up a C-sharp.net project. Uh, this is going to be a course that I'm going to be uploading throughout the next little while on the basics of C-sharp and .net. So .net is actually a runtime which C-sharp basically compiles itself into. Back in the day, there were a lot of different types of .net, uh, I guess, interpreters. There was Py.net, I believe, uh, Python.net. There's a lot of different things out there, but we're going to be using C-sharp uh, with .net. Uh, so what do we need to do to begin? Basically, what I like, my favorite IDE, you can use whatever one you want, but I really, really like Visual Studio. So we're going to install the latest version of Visual Studio. It might not be 2022 by the time you're watching this video, but it most likely will be if you're watching it within the next three years, because I think they do a release every three years. The last release was 2019, and then now it's 2022. So I'm pretty sure you are going to be downloading this version. So we're going to click download, and you're going to download the community version unless for whatever reason you have licenses to use the professional or the enterprise versions of Visual Studio but we're gonna just do community um, I already have this installed but I'm gonna run you through basically what needs to be done here because there's a couple things you'll you'll need to select sorry uh, so we're just gonna close this tab we don't really need it anymore and close all of this stuff okay so it'll look like this it's just downloading the actual installer and then it should appear any second there we go so, so I'm just going to show you the community 2019 version just because I think that'll be a little bit easier. I already have 2022 installed, so there's no point in doing that. Um, anyway, do 2022. This is just for the sake of showing you how this is done. So I like to select ASP.NET, Node.js. These, you don't need these for this video at all, uh, but this will, maybe you are going to want this later. Uh, Python, if you plan on doing that with Visual Studio as well. I mean, obviously you can just do it with something like VS Code or something a lot more simple. You don't need Visual Studio for that. Uh, but I like selecting these two. And I like selecting .NET desktop environment. I like selecting desktop environment with C++. If you want to do mobile development, if you're planning on doing stuff with Unity or Unreal Engine, all we need for this video is this, this package right here. .NET desktop environment, or sorry, development. I don't know where I got environment from. Uh, this is all you need. And then you just want to hit install. Install Visual Studio completely, wait for it to be done and then you're good to go. So once you have that installed, you open it up. Uh, anyway, we'll see something like this. You won't see any projects here. It'll probably look a little bit more simple for you if you've never made anything. But we're gonna go over here, create new project, and we are just gonna create a simple console app for right now. Uh, this is pretty essential for learning the basics of C-sharp. Uh, if we try any of these other things, I think it'll be a little bit too complicated uh, from a beginner standpoint. So we're just gonna stick with a console app we're gonna click next. We're gonna call it um, begin sharp. And we're gonna choose a different directory, select the folder and press next. Now we are going to do net 6.0. Uh, we are not gonna to use top level statements. Top level statements give you a bit less control over things and it's a little bit, um, it's not really what C sharp is. I mean, it is starting to become that, but if you do top level, all you'll end up seeing is this console.write line. Um, not any of the other stuff like the namespace or the class. So we're just going to run through this really quickly. We're not actually going to do anything uh, other than probably change this one line here. So we're going to talk about what's going on here and what this is. If we press this button up here, which is the kind of debugging uh, running plugin, or sorry, not plugin, button, uh, it'll open up a console window and you'll see that it immediately closes. Now, why is that? Basically, C sharp is seeing this one line console dot right line hello world right and that's all it thinks it has to do so when the program ends it basically is ending here it will just close uh, what can we do to prevent this well we can give it another command uh, so if it's expecting to do something else such as console dot read line now what does this do basically this will attempt for the console to read the uh, string that a user inputs. What that means is if we go here, we can now see hello world and it's actually staying open because we can type here. It's expecting us to type something. But what happens when we type something here? Well, it'll just close like before. So if we type in hello, it'll close. Um, so something we can do really quickly 
is assign this as a string and we'll call it user input. I usually like to do camel case. You might be a little bit um, confused as to why I'm doing it like this and not like this. Typically, um, developers use uh, kind of, I don't know what it's called. I think it's title case or some bullshit like that. Uh, like this for a method. So if I was using a void, which is kind of like a function in C sharp, uh, except there's not really any return value, then we would be using, uh, you know, capitals on the beginning of each part. Uh, or if it's a property, but we'll get into that later uh, in another video. For right now, we're just doing a very basic uh, implementation. And then, so what we want to happen is we want it to read the line back to us, or sorry, write the line back to us. And then we're just gonna read the line again, just so that we can see it in the console. So when we press this, it says, hello world, and we'll say hello, and it'll say hello again, because that's what we just wrote. That's what this is doing. It's saving it as a string, and what a string is, is basically just a sequence of characters, and then it's reading the line. <clears throat> we'll go into strings in a later video, but basically it's just saving whatever you entered as a string, and then it's uh, outputting it, just like we did here, hello world. Because this is a string, we can put it here. If this was, let's say, an integer, which is a number that does not have any decimal values, so if we do int and then num equals, let's do 52, and we put it here, because right line has an overload, and what that means is ba basically it accepts other arguments. So if we actually control and click on right line, we can actually see the code of every single overload. And what an overload is, is it's pretty much the same function, but it accepts a different argument. So this accepts a bool. This accepts a single character. This accepts a character list. This accepts a character list, the index, and the count. Now, I'm not really sure about that, how that works. This accepts a decimal, double, a flow, integer, u integer, long value. So essentially, we won't get an error. But if it's expecting a string here, um, then it will definitely not work because we're using an integer type. Uh, so yeah, this is a value type, whereas this is an object type and uh, can convert them. If you were expecting a string, something you could do would just be uh, something like this, or you could simply do to string like that. Uh, anyway, I don't wanna get too into everything just yet. Uh, I wanna explain what the namespace is. What is the namespace? As you might have noticed, it is the name of our CS project. So if I create another class here, and a class is basically just another, it's like a text file that is linked. Well, it's not always linked together, but it's a part of the project. It's not a text file though. It's C sharp code. Uh, so .cs, when you see that, it is a C sharp file. Now you might be a little bit confused by all of this stuff, but all you really want is the class. And we're gonna call it secondary.cs it's not really going to do anything so this is just to show how namespaces work as you can see up here there's already a lot of using directives and what these are are basically calls to other libraries so that you can use them in your code um so let's say for example i didn't have this using system.collections.generic i wouldn't be able to use lists although i think i would because these are um i think these are global directives now uh, so what that means is they're across the entire program. That's why these are showing up as gray, because they're not actually needed. Or maybe it's because I'm not using them. Let's let's see. So if I do a list string, this is pretty much an array, uh, but the thing about arrays is that they have a defined size limit. Now, if this isn't making sense to you, that's okay. Uh, I probably won't if you're brand new to this. But just just continue. Just continue, okay? It'll It'll start making sense the more you look into it. The more you learn, the more you use it. And I, I recommend that you do the things that I'm doing alongside. If you have a second monitor, or maybe you uh, can just do something like this, uh, and then have your code on one side, and then have the video on the other. I don't know, just follow along in some way. It'll help you a lot, guaranteed. So we're just gonna call this string list, and we are going to initialize it. We're not actually gonna do anything with it. 
uh, but as you can see, yeah, so it's still great, which means that that's not necessary for this. I think it's because it's just a global directive at this point. It didn't used to be. Sometimes it would get added automatically, but all of these are references to other libraries that you'll be able to use in your code. So if I do using and I do uh, begin sharp, uh, I will be able to use methods from here. So if we make actually there's already one there. So I can use all of the methods from begin sharp. So if I make a new public uh, static void secondary, um, and then we're just going to do that and console.write line secondary. So pretty much what this is going to do is literally just type in secondary into the console. We're not even going to test it because there's not really a point. I'm just showing you that you'll be able to use it. Uh, so because begin sharp is actually the namespace, as you can see, and not the class, we're going to have to do program. If we want to uh, make it even simpler, we can do dot program. Uh, we are going to have to make this a public class. Uh, so if we want to get rid of this, we can do using static and then begin sharp dot program. And now we don't even need program. We can just type in secondary. And this is the uh, method that we made earlier. And because this isn't actually in a function, it's going to throw an error, but we can do something like this and put it in a function and it'll work. So yeah, that's what a namespace is basically. Um, it's kind of like holding for all of your important stuff. So let's go back to program.cs. And this can also uh, be something like begin sharp dot, I don't know, secondary. And then that's what you'll have to use to import all of the, uh, all of the methods and whatnot. Uh, usually I kind of just like to keep it simple for really small libraries, just begin sharp. Okay, so in program, so we're not going to really worry too much about the access modifier for internal. All we really need to know is the class program. So what a class is, as I've explained earlier, is it's pretty much just a an object type with a lot of containing stuff. So this can contain any type of object or or value type, so like a public integer, um, as you can see, like this, uh, or it can contain methods such as these. So static void main, we could do uh, static string name, and then now this is the really cool thing I love about C sharp. It's just so elegantly typed. I love it. I fucking love it. And also for something like this, we don't even need these. Uh, so if you're more used to Python syntax, this could be like, we don't even need any of that. We can make it a lot easier. If it's just a one liner, this will return the exact same thing, which is something I really love about C sharp. There's a lot of different ways to write things. And I know this goes for all languages, but I really feel like C sharp is super flexible and it's really, really fun to work in once you get a good understanding. Um, so voids, as I've said earlier, are pretty much just functions. Uh, sometimes you can pass in a parameter. You don't always have to. Uh, let's say I want to put a parameter in here. You can't just write string. It has to also be assigned a name. And then this can be used inside of here. Sorry. Uh, this can be used inside of here. So name, uh, we can just, I guess, write the name. Right? And then this will output the name that you enter in here. So if I do secondary, and then I type in what's up, this will just console write line this. Uh, what if I want a default value? What if what if I don't always have something in there? Well, we can actually do that by typing equals and then giving it a default value. So we can say world, like it's already sh telling us to do. Um, so yeah, we can make that world. So every time this will be run, it'll just say world. Or the other cool thing is you can just type your own thing and uh, it'll override this. So it won't say world, it'll say this. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, I like that a lot. I love default parameters. They are very helpful in a lot of ways. Uh, so I know this has probably been a little bit more complicated than you originally thought for setting up the project. Not all of this is necessary either, but I really hope it helped in some way at least. And uh, thanks for watching.